Hello, my name is Ambrose. Right on this rock here is a common southern carnivorous snail. Let's have a look at this magnificent mini beast. This is an example of an Australian native snail that's a herbivore. Most Australian snails eat decaying plant matter and fungi. Well, not this one. They are carnivorous, hence the name. Common Southern Carnivorous Snail. They eat snails, worms, and even their own kind. When hunting, they will follow the slime trail of their victim. Like seen here. This carnivorous snail is eating an introduced common garden snail. This is not a native Australian. When it finds its prey, this carnivorous snail uses its radula to attach to its victim. The radula is a flexible band of microscopic, sharp teeth. The carnivorous snail uses its radula to eat its prey. When the prey snail retracts into its shell, it unwittingly makes some room for the carnivorous snail to enter its shell to eat its prey. Sometimes, the other snail's shell is broken by the pressure. It's very gruesome. I've noticed that snails often put out defensive bubbles when they're being attacked. Sometimes the carnivorous snail's prey is significantly larger than itself. So, sometimes it might take them a few strikes to get the snail. The prey snail is being eaten alive right now, but it's trying to escape. I'm glad I'm not a snail, because this would be an absolutely horrid way to die. After the carnivorous snail has finished eating, he just leaves an empty shell. If the meal is too big, he'll eat part of it and leave the rest. As you can see, if the snail shell is the right size, it could be completely hollowed out by the carnivorous snail. Like this poor fella right here. It's so fascinating. Unlike most other land snails, this carnivorous snail does not use a film of mucus across its aperture to keep it moist inside the shell. The aperture is the shell's opening. The film over the aperture is called an epiphram, and you've probably seen it on common garden snails. So because this predator doesn't use an epiphram, it usually rests under rocks, logs, and deep in leaf litter to survive dry periods. You may have heard that the cicadas have started to sing again. The flattened shell of the carnivorous snail will protect the snail's soft body. The diameter of its shell can reach about 28 millimeters in length. The shell has lots of low, closely spaced ribs on the upper surface of its shell. It also has low ribs on the sides of its swirls. The snail looks rather sporty with its cream stripe on the back of its neck, which seems to match the color of its foot. As you know, snails don't have legs, but they do have a foot. This is his ventral foot. They use their muscular ventral foot to move along. The foot secretes a slippery mucus to make a smooth path for the snail. The foot also contracts its muscles to make wavy movements so the snail can move along just like this. Well, I'd better say goodbye, so thanks for watching and bye for now. I'll see you on our next adventure. Subscribe and you can join me in our next adventure. Bye.